Hello everyone, this is Inka and today I'm going to be making Thai food for 24 hours. I'm very very excited because I've actually never attempted to make Thai dishes before, so this is going to be a first for me. Thai cuisine is actually probably one of my favorite cuisines in the world. Their flavor profile of just sweet, savory, spicy is like right up my alley. My kitchen's going to smell wonderful, I already know it. But first things first, I'm gonna do some shopping, I'm gonna go to a Thai grocery store and hopefully be able to find everything I need. All right, let's go. I just finished purchasing some ingredients. I'm gonna go home and get ready to cook. For breakfast today, I'm going to be making what is a very popular street food in Thailand called mu bing, which is basically grilled pork skewers. Mu stands for pork, bing stands for grilled. So this was actually recommended to me by my friend Tarn, who said that mu bing is an iconic school breakfast. So it's some pork skewers with some sticky rice, and that's kind of how you start the day off, which honestly sounds fantastic to me. And then the recipe I'll be following, actually most of the recipes I'll be following today is from Pylin, from Pylin's Kitchen. She just has this huge library of incredible Thai recipes, super helpful. That's where I'm going to be following most of my steps today. All right, so in terms of ingredients, I actually already started preparing yesterday because the pork for the pork skewers kind of needs to marinate overnight. Starting with the sauce, where I actually mashed up a bunch of garlic, cilantro stems. I think you're supposed to use cilantro roots if you have it, but I couldn't find them, so I used the stems of my cilantro instead, and I just tried to like mash it up with this tiny little mortar and pestle. <laughs> that was the only one I could find, so I struggled a little bit there. But yeah, so I mashed up my garlic, my cilantro stems, some palm sugar, which kind kind of looks like this. It smells closer to brown sugar than, you know, white sugar. So I also mashed that in there until it became this like puree of sorts. And that's when I added in like a bunch of sauces, like oyster sauce, some soy sauce, some black soy sauce, which is this. This is the black soy sauce I used. This black soy sauce was very interesting to me because I had first assumed that it was very similar to dark soy sauce in Chinese cuisine, which I have, but um, for reference, this is the dark soy sauce we use. They both have like a much more richer, darker color. We use dark soy sauce normally for color rather than flavor, but for this black soy sauce, it actually has a very distinct flavor to it. Also smells slightly sweeter. I also added in some coconut milk, some water, and then I just mix that together until it forms this kind of sauce with a thicker consistency. And then on the other end, I had some pork butt, which I just cut it into the size that I wanted to. And then I just poured this marinade sauce all over and made sure it was all coated. And then I just let that do its thing overnight in the fridge. I also soaked my bamboo skewers in water because even though I'm not gonna be grilling this because I don't have a grill, when you sort of just fry them up, you wanna make sure the sticks don't burn. And then later in the day, after I let it marinate for a couple of hours, that's when I added in some more cornstarch, which is going to help the meat become a little more tender. It helps with the texture, give it a little more of a cubeness. That's when I started just skewering. Yeah, I just, uh, uh, try not to put too much meat on each stick. It did get a little greedy, but the idea is like I wanted maybe like three to four pieces on each stick. And I just lined them up on a baking tray. And then I just put another sort of plastic wrap on top and just let that set a little bit. That brings me to today where I now have my skewers right here. When I opened my fridge, it just smelled so wonderful. Yeah, so now that I have these, I'm pretty much ready to grill. Over here on this end, I actually have my rice cooker going already to make some sticky rice. So this is what sweet rice looks like. The grains are almost like a little plumper. This is jasmine rice. They're a little slimmer, I would say. We're going to let this finish cooking and I'm gonna get started on the skewers. In my small New York apartment, I am just going to use my cast iron it's really hard. It's the closest thing I have to a grill. Channeling my inner street food hawker energy. Let's see if I do this. Woo! 
five. So many skewers. There we go. Hair in. Curious to know if I'll get some good color on here. All right, I think it's time to do a flip. So let me just, oh my gosh, my poor skewering job. Ooh, oh, okay, it got some nice color going on. Ooh, that one looks good. I mean, that's not too bad. The thing is, it does burn very easily because remember all that palm sugar I put into it? It gets color really quickly and it will burn if you're not careful. So this is pretty much the only step I need to do this morning. Just need to finish grilling these. Probably gonna do a better job once I put the camera down. I'm gonna serve it up with some sticky rice and then I'm ready to enjoy breakfast. just gonna go right into tasting again because this is a street food style breakfast but look at these skewers they are so beautiful wow I'm gonna go and take a bite the flavor is like all over it's not just on the outside the meat is so tender it really had had time to like soak in that marinade and that starch there's a little bit of like what i said cuteness to it think about all the sauces we put in there all the savory sauces like the dark soy sauce the oyster sauce then you get like the sweetness of the palm sugar i love sweet and savory and i love garlic and this is literally all of those things tarn did say that i gotta eat this with some sticky rice so i'm gonna take a bite here i'm gonna scoop some of the sticky rice out and using our hands actually the consistency of this rice is like it's like very sticky very chewy so mm, it's perfect also some soy milk on the side soy milk something i had growing up for breakfast also a popular breakfast drink in Thailand. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and I will start working on lunch. Today's gonna be a beautiful day. Hello again, it is lunchtime. I just put some jasmine rice into my rice cooker, but what I'm making for lunch today is pad kaprao, which is pad means stir fry, kaprao means holy basil. And what I'm making is a ground chicken stir fry with holy basil, also known as Thai basil. So this is what Thai basil looks like. And you can see that the leaves are a little, kind of like sharper with like solid edges versus the sweet basil leaves, which are usually like shinier and like almost like rounder, I would say. Taste wise, they have more of like the spicy peppery taste. So I actually use Thai basil in a lot of Taiwanese dishes which is different, not Thai. Thai and Taiwanese, two different things. Let me show you what else I have for this pad kaprao, which is, again, I think a pretty iconic lunch food over there that everybody enjoys. So over here, I have my holy basil, Thai basil. I have some ground chicken, just like half a small onion, some long green beans. I also have some garlic here and some chili. I like it when my dishes have a bit of a kick. So we're gonna put literally all of this, yes. All of the chilies. And of course I have my sauces here as well. Oyster sauce, black soy sauce, fish sauce. This is not part of the recipe. I just bought it because this is something I've always wanted to try too. Tom Yum soup flavored. Maybe not for today, but another day. And then I also just have some eggs on the side because I wanna kind of finish it off with an egg on the very top. Because this is so small, I'm gonna chop up my chili and garlic. Maybe it's too much chili, you think? Now I can toss it in. I would have used two different types of chilies, but this is the only one I could find, the spicy one. Oh my gosh, it's a struggle. Mash it. I'm starting to smell spicy already though. This is what it looks like right now. All right, so chili paste is ready. I'm going to really quickly cut up my green beans and my onions before I make the sauce. Small bite-sized pieces. Doesn't that be super fun? Sauces. First up, I'm gonna put like what Pailin in her recipe refers to as the holy trinity of stir fry sauces, which is oyster sauce, soy sauce, and fish sauce. Then, gonna add some sugar, of course, to balance out the savoriness. 
Last but not least, I'm gonna add some water just to help dissolve the sugar. And because in stir fry, usually you do want some sort of liquid to help bring it all together. So I'm gonna get some water. There we go. All right, that's it. That's our sauce. It's right here. It's stir fry time. Oil in. According to the recipe, the cool thing is I don't actually have to wait until the oil heats up to add my chili and garlic. It smells incredible in here. Chili garlic, everybody. Chili garlic. All right, I don't actually want my garlic burnt, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my chicken right in and just make sure it doesn't clump up. This is a lot of chicken, huh? All right, I'm starting to get some color on the chicken here. In goes the sauce. There we are. This is why we have to add water because now it can really kind of have the chicken cook in it a little bit. You know, technically I could have added the onions and green beans earlier, but I do like it when it's a little more on the crunchy end. So now that the chicken is almost done, I'm going to add in the rest of the vegetables. Oh, it is starting to smell like a restaurant kitchen in here. Oh, I just love stir fries in a wok. This is so quick to put together. Oh my goodness, okay. You see that? It's like all coated now, ready to go, beautiful color. And now what I'm gonna do is actually just turn it on low heat and I'm gonna throw in the basil. I don't wanna cook it for too long because then it gets soggy. You don't want soggy. Soggy anything is no good. Basil is going in. That's a lot. I know it looks like a lot of basil, but kind of like spinach, you know, you put a lot and then it, it just becomes like one tiny bite. Oh, it smells so good. The Thai basil, the moment it hits the pan, it's like aromatics just right in the face. A little bit of a taste here. Mm. Oh, just really spicy. Oh my God. I always do this. Why? I need to stop doing this. Anyways, this is, this is done. Anyways, I'm gonna grab my eggs and I am going to fry these up Thai style, which is basically you want more oil in the wok. The moment it hits the pan, you want it to just like fry up until it becomes this like golden brown color. Oil, 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 good amount of oil. I'm gonna let that heat up. You want it to be really hot, essentially. Egg going in. It's a little too much egg. I too greedy, too greedy. Classic me. Oh, you see how it like puffs up right away? Oh my God, look at that. Wow. Look at this egg. Look at it. What is going on right now? All right, it's getting a nice golden brown. So I'm gonna go grab a plate so I can take it off before I serve it on the rice. I have all my components ready. I'm gonna serve it up. It is time to eat and oh my gosh, this looks so good. I am, oh, and it smells so good. There's something about holy basil that just makes me want to eat a lot. It's so floral, it's so fragrant. It's probably also because it reminds me of like a lot of the dishes I had growing up. Let's see if we get like a little yolk action here. There you go, there you go. Oh man. Let's see if I can steal a bite here with the rice and wow, I just got like a bunch of egg. Oh my gosh. First bite, everybody. Look how beautiful this crust is. The fact that it was like high heat and like the egg hitting the oil it creates this like beautiful crunchy golden crust that just goes so well with the rice. I love that the onions are still crunchy, the green beans are still crunchy, a lot of texture going on, but the flavor itself of this dish, again, just a lot of notes of umami. And of course I can't forget that chili garlic paste. Is it a little spicy? Yes. But is it the right amount of spice? I think so actually. If you've never done stir fry with Thai basil, you should really give it a try. Everything about this plate is just aromatics all over. I'm gonna stop gushing and I'm gonna finish eating and then I will see you guys for dinner. What a great day. What a great day. 
It's dinner time and I feel like we've had a lot of rice today so far. So I'm thinking for dinner, we're gonna do a noodle dish and I'm gonna make what is known as radna. And what this dish is, is a stir fry noodle. But instead of it being a dry stir fry noodle dish, it is kind of has more of like a gravy consistency. The noodles we use are very similar to the ones we see in like drunken noodles where it's like that wide flat noodle. I bought this yesterday in Chinatown. So this is like the noodle before it's been cut up. I am going to have to cut it myself since I couldn't find the ones that are already cut up. Let me show you what I have over here. You can see there's a lot of stuff going on. I have my noodles over here. Then I have some Chinese broccoli, which look like this. I also have some garlic over here that I already chopped up. Then I have some tapioca starch already opened. White pepper. Then I have this sauce. It's a soybean paste, and in Thai, it's called tao jiao. Once again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I am trying this specific one. I'm curious to know how it is different in flavor. In Radna, this is very important. Then I also have this Golden Mountain seasoning sauce, and then I have this black soy sauce, and then I have this pork that I actually already marinated last night. I just sliced the pork into thin slices, and then I added some cornstarch, which again helps with the texture, gives it a nice coating, and I added soy sauce, oyster sauce, white pepper, some sesame oil, and also an egg white which is something we do in Chinese cuisine as well. It creates this sort of protective layer that helps the meat retain its moisture and texture. So first things first, I am going to try and slice up my noodles. It's a little firmer right now. It's not as flexible as you would want it to be. I'm just gonna see if I can spread it out a little bit. This is what it looks like right now. There you go, my first, uh, Noodles. Doesn't have to be super uniform. All right, I'm just gonna keep doing this now until I have a lot of nudes. There's plenty here now. Look at all that. Springy, bouncy noodles. Okay, now that my noodles are cut up, I'm actually going to cook them in the wok for a little bit first to add some color. Technically, they're already cooked as is, but right now the noodles are a little too firm, so I want to soften them a little bit. Go ahead and add some oil. You do want quite a bit of oil. I don't want any noodles sticking to this. I'm gonna turn this on. Ooh, it's loud, 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 loud. Here we go. I don't know, man. Oh my gosh. I hope I didn't intentionally like deep fry the noodles. Don't stick. I say that like that's gonna help. That's not gonna help. I gotta work fast, I just realized. I'm gonna add black soy sauce. Here we go. A little bit of color. The moisture hopefully will help it loosen up too. I feel like it's definitely expanded a little bit though. It's a lot softer already, which is really nice because this process is like super fast. So I'm going to focus on this for a second. I think usually they make this in like a giant wok. But right now I think this is just about ready. It's starting to clump together. I am going to remove it from the heat now. So now I'm going to make the sauce. But, all right, garlic is going in. Let's make that with gel. Ooh, smells kind of miso-y. I know they have two versions of this. One is the one with the beans, like you can actually see them. And one is like kind of they're all blended together, but this is very interesting. Smells really nice already, super fragrant. All right, it is starting to heat up. So now I'm gonna add in my stock and a lot of the rest of the sauces. Add my soy sauce, Golden Mountain seasoning sauce. Ooh, it does smell like Maggie. A bit of that in there. And of course, some sugar. One, two, three, four. Not four, four is a lot. Okay, last but not least, some white pepper. Anyways, I'm gonna wait for this to come to a boil. In the meantime, I'm gonna chop up my Chinese broccoli super quick. Okay, my stock situation is coming to a boil. I feel like mostly I'm smelling the dao jiao, the soybean paste. Going to now add in my pork. Add this in now, make sure it moves around. I would say this is like a pretty fast process, even though I'm running around a lot. Everything's very much like hits the walk off, which is kind of really nice. It's a change of pace compared to, I think the rest of the ones I've done so far. There's a lot of like baking and waiting. So I appreciate it. I think it's coming to a boil already actually. Wow, okay. Got my veggies ready. So I'm gonna add my vegetables in there. 
at this point it's just about what consistency I want. If I want it thicker, then I would add some of that tapioca starch slurry that I have right here. I already mixed up some tapioca starch with water. Kind of like it a little bit thicker, so I might add a little bit. See how that goes. Ooh ho ho ho! Instant thickening. See if I need to adjust it. This is all soybean product. Soybean is great. Okay, I feel pretty happy with this consistency. I'm going to now pour this over the noodles. Dress that up a little bit on the top with some white vinegar and chili, which was recommended for serving purposes. Hope you're all ready for dinner as much as I am. Here it is, my noodles, and it smells incredible. I mean, considering all the seasoning I put in there, I am not surprised, but also, I can also smell the red chili vinegar that I put on top, actually. Enough talk, I'm gonna take a first bite of these noodles. I mean, just now I was, ooh, okay, I feel the kick of the chili. It's actually a very nice kick, and I like sort of the acidity, the vinegar adds to it, because this noodle dish is super, super flavorful, just based on just now when um, I tested the sauce a little bit. Soybean paste, I think, fermented soybean paste, is adding a lot of flavor to this. Mostly flat rice noodles are one of my favorite noodles too, so I'm maybe also just making this because I knew I would love it. The pork is beautifully tender. I think that egg white and Tapioca starch mixture really did wonders to it. I'm pretty impressed with how this turned out and I do feel like it's something I would totally make again. I'm gonna slowly finish this and then I'll have one last thing to enjoy for today. Today's day of beautiful meals and I will see you then. I know I just had a lot for dinner, but you know what they say, you always have a second stomach for dessert. So here we are. And for tonight, I'm gonna end it on a sweet note with some steamed bread and pandan coconut custard. So I actually first had this dessert in New York at a Thai hot pot restaurant. And I just remember being really pleasantly surprised by the pairing of fluffy bread and just this like smooth, velvety, slightly sweet custard. So I really wanted to recreate it. Here are the pandan leaves that were frozen. They're a little wet because of how it's like defrosted, but the smell is kind of like, like you do smell a hint of coconut, but I feel like the main scent is like, you know the smell of fresh cut grass? It's a little bit like that. In like a pleasant way though, you know like fresh sugar cane juice, it also has that sort of like, more like herbal smell, I guess. It's kind of like that. This is what's going to give our custard that beautiful green color. So I'm excited to experiment with it. I have some condensed milk, some coconut milk, some evaporated milk, sugar, and egg yolks. And of course I have some fluffy bread that I just bought. I'm gonna cut them into really thick chunks because that's how you're supposed to enjoy it. But first up, I'm just gonna blend up my pandan leaves with some coconut milk. These are going in there. Just gonna measure out my coconut milk. A lot of that. Let's blitz it up. All right, so I'm going to just strain this now. You see that wonderful green color already? Beautiful. See, this is all the like pandan leaves up here. I'm gonna add some condensed milk. Apparently not all recipes do this, but if we like it more creamy, this is a good idea and I do like it a little more creamy. Now that I have these combined, I'm gonna heat it up gently over the stove top just to warm it up a little bit. So, slow heat, how about that? Okay, back over here, I'm just going to combine my sugar, my cornstarch, and some salt. Also adding in my egg yolks. Mix that in nice and smooth. I think my uh, coconut milk should be warmed up, so we're going to temper this and just slowly combine pandan coconut milk and the egg yolks. It's not super hot right now, I'm just gonna add a little bit. First, beautiful green milk. Oh my gosh, my arms. All right, it's all in. I'm going to actually put this all back into this bowl because we're gonna cook this. Ooh, this color though. I'm just going to cook this down until it becomes like a custardy 
texture. It's gonna thicken considerably in a bit, but it's gonna take a while. So I'm gonna be here working my arm. Work off all I had for dinner, just in time for dessert, you know? So I'm going to just add a little bit of evaporated milk, just to loosen it up a little bit, because I want it to be more of a dip, because this is going to actually thicken up a little bit more when it cools down. I'm gonna run it through the strainer again, just to make sure it's completely smooth because we want velvety. Is this a lot of effort for making dessert? Yes. Is it gonna be worth it? Yes. There you go, look at how smooth that is down there. Looks a little bit like Shrek right now, but you know, I think this is it. This is my custard. It's done and it smells wonderful. And I have to steam my bread now super quick and then I can eat. Oh my gosh, bread. <laughs> I smelled bread and I just instantly got so happy, but oh, I wish you guys could smell this right now. It smells so good. It smells a little bit like vanilla. If you've had pandan, you would know, but you know, almost like coconutty, but again, there's a sort of like grassy coconut. I also wanna say, I know steaming bread is a little bit unconventional, but the things it does for your bread is like, it makes it like extra fluffy, like wow. It literally just bounces right back up. Mm, mm, mm. Bring me back to when I first had this. Oh my goodness. It's because there's like pandan and coconut and a little bit of salt to balance it out. Everything just kind of plays together so well and there is complexity to it. But I'm just really glad that today I finally got a chance to try out these new dishes I've always really loved, but for some reason have never attempted to try before. And now that I've tried it once, I know I'll be doing it again. I think that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of this, this 24 hour challenge and just learning new dishes. Now it's time for me to sit down and relax a little bit, but I'll see you guys next time. Bye.